Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Hear now the word of our Lord. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other woman with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Several years ago, I was in Haiti doing some work for the church, and I met a man who told me about his uncle. Interesting man, this uncle. According to my Haitian friend, this uncle was a zombie. Oh, really? Uh, So uh, uh, you're telling me that your uncle died, he was dead, he was buried, and one day he popped out of the grave and started walking around, and he said, no, no, my friend assured me. Uh, There was no walking out of the grave. Apparently, this uncle had died, and before the family could bury him, he came back to life. He couldn't talk. He mumbled a lot. He he couldn't use his right arm, and his right leg was kind of uh, uh, not functioning well. He just sort of hobbled and, and went along like this. And I said, you know, I'm not a doctor, but it sounds like maybe your uncle had a stroke. Do you think that might have happened? Well, my Haitian friend wasn't very educated, didn't know what a stroke was, but he knew what a zombie was, and he was afraid of his uncle. I mean, after all, who wouldn't be afraid of a zombie? When you're dead, you're supposed to stay dead, and zombies are scary. I've seen them in the movies. Take my word for it. In fact, today there are so many zombie movies. Last year, we were treated with the classic movie, Abraham Lincoln versus the Zombies. This year, we had Pride and Prejudice and the Zombies. What would Jane Austen think? When I was a kid, it was a simpler kind of thing. We just had the Frankenstein monster. And I'm not talking about the fake Frankenstein monsters. I'm talking about the real deal, Boris Karloff. Every Saturday morning, one of the three television stations we could pick up when I was a kid had Shock Theater that showed all of the black and white horror movies from the 50s and the 40s, and Frankenstein was the best. Scared me to death. Mad scientists putting together parts of dead people and bringing this monster back to life and yelling, it's alive, it's alive. And the monster that night came to see me in my bedroom. I saw him as clear as could be, walking down the shadows of the hallway late at night. I yelled out for my family to run for the hills. I was going to save their lives. Mom didn't believe I saw the monster, but I did. She thought I had some sort of dream, but I know better. She wouldn't let me watch Shock Theater for a long time after that. Now, I share these stories because it is instinct for us to be afraid of something that is dead that comes back to life. I knew it when I was watching Boris Karloff coming down my hallway. My Haitian friend knows it when he misunderstood a stroke for his uncle becoming a zombie. The women who found the empty tomb had the same feeling on Easter morning, the first Easter. There they were, in the words of Luke, they were terrified 
terror, fear, confusion. Those are good, solid reactions to the resurrection of Christ. Resurrection meaning he comes to life after being dead and buried. Dead and buried. And suddenly he's walking around. Scary thing. And in Luke, the women are terrified. In Matthew's gospel, the Roman guards are witnesses to the resurrection event. And in the words of Matthew, for fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. How else are you going to respond to a dead man walking out of a grave? Mark's gospel ends with women learning of the resurrection. And in that gospel, it ends with, so they went out, fled from the tomb for terror. And amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Fast forward 2,000 years, and here we are, Easter Sunday, 2016. Probably no one here is sitting in terror. No fear or trembling. Your greatest fear today is whether or not your favorite restaurant is open on Easter Sunday. So how do we celebrate the resurrection today? There are Easter egg hunts and photo ops for the children, lots of fun, no fear. I'm not sure what Easter eggs and the Easter bunny has to do with Christmas, or rather Easter. I Google it every year, and I always forget from one year to the next, and I've forgotten to Google it this year. but, uh, But, you know, it's fun, and especially when you've got children or grandchildren. We've lost the fear. Of the resurrection and I think that's a good thing Jesus was not a Frankenstein monster coming out of the grave Jesus was not a zombie he is our Savior and he comes out of the tomb risen from the dead and the angels were right when they said fear not the problem is when we lost our fear of the resurrection we lost something else as well our sense of wonder our sense of awe, our sense of being amazed. We've become used to the resurrection, maybe even a little bit bored by it. And we forget that the resurrection was an emotionally powerful moment in history. At first it was fear, and then it matured into awe and wonder, but our reaction was never meant to mellow into complacency which is, I think, the way many of us react to the resurrection. This is the one day that makes a difference in all the world. Without the resurrection, Jesus would have been nearly or maybe completely a forgotten footnote in history. But with the resurrection, this day made all the difference in the world. It was the resurrection that moved the early Christians to go into all the world and make disciples of Jesus Christ. It was the resurrection that motivated early Christians, especially during the Middle Ages, to create hospitals all over the world. It was the resurrection that motivated the church to build universities and schools and to overcome illiteracy. It was the early years of American history when a Presbyterian church was established on the frontier, the congregation always built the schoolhouse first and then built the sanctuary. And the Presbyterian pastor was expected to be the town's elementary school teacher as well as the preacher. It was the resurrection that even today motivates the creation of written languages for those small tribes of people where illiteracy is still the norm because no one's invented a written language for them yet. It was the resurrection that challenged the church to question the acceptance of slavery and to support abolition in this nation over a century ago and in more recent decades moved many clergy and other Christians to always be on the front lines of civil rights marches. And the resurrection challenges us even today as we have to let go of prejudices and long-held beliefs that... We look at today and wonder, maybe we weren't right after all. What does the resurrection move us to believe and to do today? It's the resurrection that moves even the cold-hearted soul to become more generous and gracious. Resurrection Day is a day that makes all the difference in the world. 
If you can be open to the moving of the Holy Spirit of God, you can realize that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not something to become used to and complacent about. We should always have a sense of awe and wonder. I mean, a dead man coming back to life. That's not something that happens every day. And while it's fine for us not to be frightened by it, as the first witnesses were, we should never be complacent about it. We should be so filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit that we should be moved to go out and continue to make a difference in the world today. There's still poverty out there. There's still racism. There's still oppression of people. There's still injustice. There are people who are lonely and afraid. There are people who need salvation and the redemption of Christ. Has the resurrection made any difference in your life? And has your knowledge of the resurrection moved you to make a difference in the lives of others? Now, if the answer to those two questions is no, then you may have something to be afraid of. My friends, believe in the resurrection. Be awed by it. Be filled with the wonder of it all. And by the power of the resurrection and of the Holy Spirit, go out of this place and into the world and make a difference in the name of Christ and his resurrection. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all might, power, dominion, and glory today and forever. Amen.